tests that we get and the challenges in our life come as a result of the significance or weight that we place on them. That's the summary of a conversation from Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins went on to speak about the other 10%. He said that 10% is the ones that we generally can't control too much. Those are the things that hit us like a ton of bricks at 5.30 on a Friday evening or 2 a.m. on a Monday morning. It's the unexpected death in the family. It's the unplanned medical emergency. It's the impact of retirement funding as a result of changes in our economic situation. While we can't really do anything about them, I'm here to talk about the 90% that we can do something about. Good evening, Natalia, fellow Toastmasters and guests. <laughs> to tell you about this story, I'm going to give you an idea of some of the incidences or an event that was ha happened in my life some time ago, how it impacted me, how it changed me, and how I grew from it. To do that, i got to take you back to April 1989. My girlfriend and I were traveling to a job interview, and all of a sudden, the car I was driving started to shake like there was no tomorrow. Now, that happened to my car several times, so that wasn't a new experience for me. I knew exactly what was wrong. So I pulled off to the side of the road and was fixing the problem when a cop car pulled up. Now, to set the stage for you, as a young kid, my mother worked in the tourism industry. As an adult, I had a summer job and I worked on weekends at a dive shop here. So my experience with Americans and American tourists were pretty prevalent. The people that I interacted with, generally speaking, were people that traveled a lot, so therefore open-minded, generally well-educated, and affluent. And so that was generally my perception of what America was like. So this cop car showing up didn't really mean a whole lot to me. I thought help was on the way. So as I got up and approached this car, the first thing I heard from this very southern gentleman was, wait right there. I stopped. And he continued to talk on his radio for what seemed like an amazing amount of time. Halfway between his car and my car, I kind of felt on this island, just standing there. He got off the radio and he said, sir, license and registration, please. And I went to reach for my wallet, which was on the back side, right hand side of my knee, when I heard, freeze! And this officer went for his gun. Yeah. I almost peed my pants. <laughs> Talk about gumption? No. In the most nervous, apologetic, looking for understanding voice that I could muster, I said to the officer, but you asked me for my ID. He said, sir, place your wallet on the trunk of your car and step away. And that's exactly what I did. My wallet was searched. I was searched, and then I was told the reason why I was being treated that way was because during that day, there had been a series of robberies that had occurred on that stretch of the highway. And the quickest and easiest way that I could remove myself of the suspect was to allow him to search my vehicle. I said, okay, and he proceeded to conduct the search. The most dangerous weapon that officer found at that time was my HP calculator. Yes, you can believe it. All of this was once a nerd. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and guests, I thought my ordeal was over, but no, that was just the beginning. Because he said, even though I had complied with that, that he suggested that I make myself available for a police lineup. And that's when my girlfriend lost it. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, Five foot seven, half black Latina, pre med student, muy caliente. Mm -hmm. All the traits that I really like, yes, I had a tight back then. <laughs> <laughs> but those traits didn't really help the situation at that time. Lisa jumped out of the vehicle, arms flailing. Are you kidding me? 
you've checked our vehicle, you see we have books, you've checked our student IDs, what do you think we're doing? You think we're robbing stores and throwing money out the windows, we're driving down the highway? I turn from suspect to referee. Police on one side, police on the other. Long story short, I agreed to the lineup. I was eliminated, and 90 minutes later I was on my way. But what I took from that experience, however, I balled it up, put it in my luggage, my baggage, and I took it with me, defining it clearly as racism. How did it affect my perception going forward? The waitress that didn't meet my expectations in terms of service. The mechanic that I felt treated me unfairly. The bank teller that could easily help me but just decided not to. <coughs> maybe, maybe not. I returned to the Cayman Islands, molded and started my own life. And two years ago, I embarked on a self-improvement journey. And one of the first nuggets that I got that I kind of took with me was this, this bit of information in which they say, it's all about how we perceive things, 90% of it. What if instead of thinking racism, I thought, young police officer, first time, trying to deal with a very difficult, intense situation. What if I thought waitress pulling a 10 hour shift really tired, doing the best that she could. What if I thought mechanic, great with cars, terrible with people? All those things would have shaped the way that I saw those things and potentially the things that I gathered from it. Relatives, masters, and guests, my message for you this evening, in my opinion, is very clear. The human being is predisposed to challenge. We are going to encounter those challenges regardless of where we are. What we can control, however, is how we view those things. And how we view those things allow us to take things positive from all those experiences. Those my